With Tuesday's space shuttle tragedy forever in our memories, and flags from Cape Canaveral to the White House at half staff, we are a nation in mourning today, Wednesday, January 29th, 1986. From NBC News, this is Today with Bryant Gumbel and Jane Pauley. And hello, everyone. We will be devoting our entire two hours today to an examination of the space shuttle tragedy and a look at where the space program goes from here. With Bryant on vacation, John Palmer joins me at the anchor desk after long duty yesterday. Good morning, John. Good morning, Jane. Among our guests this morning, Senator Jake Garn, a shuttle traveler himself, and we'll go live to Concord, New Hampshire, to talk with the friends of the teacher astronaut Krista McAuliffe. And we'll talk with a psychologist who will tell us how to deal with what can only be described as this national case of grief. Well, let's get started uh, with the latest on the shuttle probe from Bob Jamison at the news desk. And good morning, Bob. Thanks, Jane and John. Good morning. As the nation continues to grieve this morning, the air search for debris from the shuttle, anything that may help explain why Challenger exploded, is resuming. NASA refuses to speculate on the cause of the tragedy, but some space experts this morning believe that a leak in the shuttle's huge external fuel tank was responsible. Dan Molina is standing by at the Johnson Space Center in Houston with the latest on NASA's plans for an investigation. Good morning, Dan. Good morning, Bob. The investigation into something as catastrophic as, as this has to deal with everything from the very obvious to details that even computers may not have noticed. Included in the obvious, yesterday morning at this time we were talking about icicles that had formed on the shuttle during a bitter cold night. NASA's only stated concern at the time was that an icicle might break off and damage the orbiter's heat protection tiles. But are there other possibilities? Could an icicle have damaged the huge external fuel tank or some connecting fuel line? The details. Is there some fact, some measurement, some hint locked in the data collected in mission control that can explain what happened? One of the very first things NASA did after the explosion was to freeze everything here, seal it off so everything will remain as it was at the moment of the disaster. The photographic evidence. The moving pictures appear to show us where the bursts of flame appeared. That could help. It could narrow the investigation to specific points on the main engines, the fuel tank, or the solid rocket boosters, perhaps to the small explosive bolts used to separate the fuel tank from the orbiter. But the video could be deceptive. NASA today will look at still pictures taken with high-powered tracking equipment, and that should provide more details. Beyond that, all day here and for so long to come, the people here will be asking themselves critical questions. Do they recall any design flaw? Anything they worried about that stopped being a concern after so many successful missions? It's all important now in this investigation, a task that is perhaps the most formidable assignment ever tackled here at the Johnson Space Center. Bob? Dan, thank you.